Follow Helen Paul and I, Frank Donga. Do you know that Nigeria is the third largest producer of ginger in the world? Maybe that's why we have this ginger torch. Ginger, oh, ginger. And time's up. As we uncover the untold stories of food heroes on the front lines. If I have money, I will maximize this place. I have the capacity to plant 500 hectares a year. Parasites is the major problem also in farming. Connecting them to untapped opportunities and the experts who can solve their problems. You can't plant the same plant, somebody can plant. Uh -huh. We have to follow the Nemit report to know when the rainfall and you know, the price is up. So that is the challenge. If tomato touches the water, then it starts rotting. Tomato should not touch the water. This is Farm and Fortune. Tonight on Farm and Fortune. So when the tomato is coming to markets, it should actually have a shaded place, a proper shaded place to stand. To be stored. Not that it just stands in the sun. Within eight hours, it gets roasted, and then yes. a lot of wastage happens. Mm. Be careful not to dump tomatoes in your opponent's bucket. Frank, uh -huh. I want you to riddle me. Riddle bow. Are you trying to do your own riddle back, Abby? Why would I do that to you? Listen, Joe, are you ready? Let's go there. I am red. People call me vegetable. But I'm actually a fruit. I'm sister with potato. But rice also considered me best friend. I'm not hot, though. What am I? Rice is your best friend. Mm. Also, what's rice, potato, mm -hmm. potato, potato, red? Oh, oh. <laughs> tomato. <laughs> <laughs> See you. you got me. Uh, tomato, you got me. potato, share. Yeah. You know it. Now, tomato, I've been a tomato. Well, man, I don't no, make life tomato. difficult it's for me. Uh, you shall got me right. right. Hello, everyone. It's Fan and Fortune. And our conversation for today will be on tomatoes. And don't forget, my name is Helen Paul. I'm Frank Donga. Welcome to Fan and, and Fortune. Fortune. Our guest on the show today is the Vice President of Olam PFB, uh, fully integrated farming, processing, ingredient manufacturing, and distribution company with a sourcing network of about 5 million farmers. Please welcome Mr. Prashan Tako. Thank you so much. Same welcome. Day. Thank you for coming on the show. If we may start with this question of all things, why, why did Orlan decide to go into tomatoes? <laughs> Okay, let's, let us look at it from two points of view. One is, let us look at the strengths of Olam. Mm. So, Olam has its humble beginning in Nigeria. This mm. is where we started. Okay. If you look at the agro products today, they're strong in agro products. Mainly, if you look at cotton, cocoa, cashew, sesame, rice, Olam is present in them. Mm. Now, let us look at the second side of it, the strength of the country. Today, our requirement here is close to 2.4 million metric tons of tomato. Wow. What we grow is 1.5 to 1.6 million metric ton. Mm. So, there is a gap of 0.6 million metric ton. Plus, there's huge wastage that happens in the, in the supply chain overall. Okay. So that contributes to 1.2 to 1.3 million metric tons of tomato requirement, which is equivalent to, so this is basically fresh tomato. If you convert it into a triple concentrate, it goes to close to 170,000 metric tons of concentrate. So there's a huge demand and a huge requirement. Wow. The third, let us also look at our culture. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, you'll agree with me there is any dish in Nigeria which goes without tomato. So mm -hmm. the consumption is huge. Per capita consumption of Nigeria is also huge. Mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity, there is a strength. So both have merged. That's the reason we have got into tomato farming. Wow. wow. And lastly, the federal government's initiative of now localizing. Mm -hmm. It is now encouraging localization of tomato. So we are now seeing a lot of things, a lot of inflows coming into tomato farming locally. Mm -hmm. So this encouragement gives us, further gives us the strength because we are consumers of tomato. We do a lot of products. Okay. So once we have our own tomato, it helps us to grow better into this particular field. Wow. Nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. But is the Nigerian tomato industry maximizing its food potential? Uh, if, you, if you ask me today, it is not. Because if you look at, we are close to 13 to 14th largest producer of the world, if you look at that. Mm. So going by that statistics, we should actually be an exporter of tomato and not an importer if you look at it today. Wow. So if the supports, if the proper supports and proper checks and balances are put in place, I'm very sure we can still or we can grow this tomato industry to a greater extent, to a bigger extent. Trying to grow the industry to a greater extent is good, but 
obviously, like many other things in agriculture, you might face some challenges. What are the challenges you have faced so far? Uh, so far, as we went into tomato, uh, let us define the challenges into two. One is an infrastructure yeah. and one is a technological. Infrastructure and technology. technological. Okay. What do I mean by infrastructure? You need very good roads because okay. as the tomato is harvested, it has to reach the factory okay. for processing or it has to reach the consumer for consumption. Yeah. Okay. If it takes delay, suppose the tomato is uh, harvested in Jigawa or Kano and to reach mile to market in Kano, it takes five days. You can understand that the life of tomato itself after it has been harvested is five days, which it is spending all along the road that it is coming to this place. To distribute within Kano? To distribute within Kano, it is fairly okay. okay. It can but, still survive But outside there. Kano? Outside Kano, it is very difficult. Can't take as much Kano as will not have days. that much of market or potential so that you can consume everything that is grown. Mm. If you see, it is grown on, along the northern belts. But the consumption will be at different ends. So we'll have to send it to different ends. So we, if you look at infrastructure, that is roads. Number two is an electricity. Mm. Today, if you have to put a factory or a processing unit, and you put it on electricity and you put it on generator, you can clearly see the cost difference. You cannot match the world costs if you are going to run everything on generator. So we need good power. Good power then supply. Good power supply, good, good road. roads. You need good irrigation. Mm. Either give canals or give dams. If it is not there, if you go on bores, you can do by bores. But yes. bores is again a costly proposal. Yes. So anything and everything we are trying to do is actually increasing the cost. Whereas we should actually be reducing the cost. So these are the infrastructural challenges we felt. Technological challenges, we don't have good seats. There are no good backup for seats. We have to ourselves do the R&D. We have to try and get seats. Mm. Good fertilizers or good pesticide that should be easily available. Like the one so that is soluble. So there are no soluble. good seeds yeah. available. Available. Correct. Then there are no, what again? Good fertilizers or good pesticides that we need. Yeah. Oh, no. So this technological support also has to be increased. So I think these are the two major challenges that we face. We got into this industry. Tomato is a highly perishable uh, crop and it demands a lot of careful handling um, treatment before you can extend the shelf life or else you might suffer a lot of loss mm. in storage. Now let's take a look at how this affects the tomato industry in Nigeria. We'll be right back. This is a basket of tomatoes. It will be sent across the country today, but less than half of the tomatoes in it will arrive at their destination. No, 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 no. This is not the particularly bad fate of this basket of tomatoes. But this is the fate of many tomato baskets that leave farms on the perilous journey to consumers. According to the Center for the Promotion of Imports from Developing Countries, CBI, an agency of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands, Nigeria loses between 45 to 60 percent of all the tomatoes it produces to spoilage, post-harvest handling, transportation, and packaging choices. Even if we save 50 percent of what we lose now, we will be back on track to meeting the 3 million tons domestic demand. Sooner than a zero is one. And I say the tomato. Kana <laughs> So we are here to monitor the situation. We are carrying out the damage. We are like communicants. Communicants in the air for now. We talk about Insha Allah. We are going to monitor the situation. Damage is not like said. We are going to monitor the situation. We are going to end the damage. We are going to look at the key. We are going to see the damage. We are going to monitor the damage. Ra'ayin <laughs> Ga ya 
kaga dole sai an samu wanda zai mutu musamman wurin doko shi cikin mota zuwa kasuwa kaga dole za wani zai hau saman shi kaga ta nan dole zai mutu kaga ba yadda za a yi a raba tomato da matacce ba yadda za a yi a raba da shi sai dai gaskiya ya danganta daga lahiyan tomato din year after year Tomato waste continues to happen from the farm down to the consumer. How can a country produce enough to meet its demand when the shortage is not in the quantity cultivated? Whew. Wow, that was a lot of wastage mm -hmm. there with tomatoes. I mean, mm -hmm. we know tomatoes are very perishable and you know, delicate. But Mr. Prashant, you have a network, a sourcing network of about 5 million uh, farmers. How big of a problem is wastage in the tomato uh, planting, harvesting, and in processing Absolutely. value chain? So we need to actually study the entire chain, if you have okay. to see the wastage. Where does it start? It starts with, firstly, the seeds. Mm -hmm. So when you take the seeds, it has to actually be grown under some specific trays that are provided for it. There is a media that, has to be pro that is provided. It has to be grown under greenhouse or at least under shade. Mm -hmm. If you do it in open, so actually the germination rate should be 80 to 90 percent. Okay. Whereas while if you do it just in the open and just want to transfer from open to the farm, you will get a 40 to 50 percent. Okay, so plant so that's the first, the, that's the first wastage. Okay. Let me tell you how much that wastage actually means. One seed will give you one plant of tomato. Okay. One plant of tomato will have at least 50 fruits. Mm -hmm. 100 gram per fruit is 5 kg of tomato. So when you, when you lose one seed of tomato, mm -hmm. you have lost 5 kg of tomato output. Wow. So that's the kind of uh, thing. The second stage you can look at is at the planting, when you remove it from the tray, from the nursery, mm -hmm. and then you plant it into the farm. So that has to be a skilled labor. Proper training and skilled training has to be given. Yeah. Third, we can look at is during the irrigation. Irrigation, there are two types. Number one, you have the furrow, that is the open irrigation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And second is the one that is drip irrigation. Okay. When you do open furrow irrigation, the problem with furrow irrigation is you do not know whether you are going more water or you are going less water. Less water. Yeah. Because one, at one moment, you will suddenly leave too much of water. At one moment, it will go dry. Mm -hmm. okay. So the plant suffers. Number two, if tomato touches the water, then it starts rotting. Tomato should not touch yeah. the water. When you use a drip irrigation, all these problems are solved because it gives the exact quantity, you can regulate the quantity, you can regulate the timing, so it feeds exactly to the plant that it needs. Mm -hmm. Third, we can see disease and weather conditions, which is not in our control so much. This yeah. is definitely in our control, uh, our control, like tuta was there, or you have the leaflet bright, or you have the nematodes, basically. Mm -hmm. So there are different pesticides available or treatments available that has to be done. Whether like last year we experienced, there was a severe heat wave in the north. Oh, yes. So if the heat wave is too much, yeah. you cannot protect the tomato from it. That is a natural thing that comes through. Mm -hmm. The fourth is during harvesting, which is a very, very important stage. Because when you are harvesting tomatoes, you, the labor who is harvesting has to be skilled. They should actually understand. Mm -hmm. You should have good agronomists. And I am very happy to say that the agronomists I have actually seen in Nigeria, we have got very good oh, agronomists good. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It is just a time that we have to actually take them to the farms, make sure you give them that opportunity and let them deliver. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident they will definitely deliver with my experience from the last three years in the tomato value chain. So you should actually understand, you cannot pluck a fruit before it is ripe or even if it is over-ripened. Mm -hmm. Because if you pluck something that is over-ripened and it takes four days to transit, by the time it reaches the market, Spoils, it is already yes. spoiled. If you pluck something that is before, I mean, it is pre-ripened, it is not ripened to its limit, then it will not be able to be used for proper processing. Mm. So you have to actually take when it turns yellow color. So, you know, by the time it reaches the market or the it factory, turns it turns crimson red. Mm. So that is the thing. Then the fourth uh, stage where actually the wastage is high is the packaging and, uh, packaging and uh, uh, processing of the particular tomato. Oh. In this country, I have seen, when I have been in this country since the last 13 years now. 13 years so, in Nigeria. 13 okay. to 14 years, rather. Yeah, no, yeah. No, in Nigeria. So if you look at that, I have seen tomatoes coming in baskets. I remember they used to come and get offloaded in mile two markets and other places. Now, if you take a basket and you put a tomato in that, and like that, you have eight baskets in a truck. Mm -hmm. So a 45 to 50 kg basket and eight baskets. So imagine the weight that is yeah. coming on the bottom tomato. You don't crush So there is no way it mm -hmm. can actually survive. It will actually going to crush. So mm -hmm. we should actually bring in crates. Crates is definitely supporting this cause. If you use crates, that, that loss will immediately yes, reduce. reduce. It will reduce to huge. Yes. So crates have to be used in transportation. That is another thing. What are other some of solutions, you know, to mitigate gross wastage? And of course, loss during transportation and of course, handling. How can we do that? Okay. So we want to speak especially about transportation and handling. Now, yes, and handling. Not the other the points. Okay. Yes. So in transportation and handling, if you look at, first is that, we have to use crates. It is compulsary we crates, have to use crates. Yes. 
now credits becomes a costly proposal for a farmer mm. oh. so we can have cooperatives you can have private cooperatives who can actually rent out credits okay like you give me an opportunity i sit right in center of jigawa and i put 5000 yes, yes, credits yes. you carry my credit for your trip and you give me 200 mm. naira for that trip so mm. you save your tomato i get and my rent for the credit yes. so a cooperative has to be brought into to encourage you can actually give credits credits will definitely reduce this mm. number 2 there are a lot of cold chains now coming up there are some initiatives i have seen i have seen some on the some on the news recently also they are using solar energy and trying to set up some cold houses so those should be encouraged mm. they should be subsidized because if you have a cold storage you increase the life of the fruit by huge by a good right. quantity okay. so that is thing third is when the when the tomato is coming to markets it should actually have a shaded place a proper shaded place to stand should be stored not that it just stands in the sun within 8 hours it gets roasted and then That's a lot true. of wastage happens mm. so these are certain ways which we can definitely look at and reduce the wastage on the tomatoes so but i, I want to talk about importation mm. you know i i'm really particular about this question at the moment the tomato paste market is dominated by imports can domestic processors you know really enter and dominate that market as well definitely now with more people coming into it and with the federal government's initiative of localization okay. localization drive okay we want to do more processing locally we want to have more local processing plants okay. we want to involve more farmers we want to plant more lands so all this is under development so i definitely see uh, that this there is a potential and i definitely see we moving towards that side only all these issues that i just pointed out they need to be helped they need to be supported somewhere thank you very much thank sir. you mr thank, much. thank, thank, you, so thank you so much uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show same year thank I you i wish so you much. guys have also enjoyed uh, the conversation we've had with him you see tomato is a very important plant you know we not, we used to spend so much to import it but now the opportunity is there for us to grow better we can move from 18 tons per hectare to 30 we are already at 40 so we can oh my cross. goodness well we can go higher 40 tons but let me yes. tell you the world levels is 75 to 80 So where uh, we are compared to it, we are past half. Uh -huh. hey, You're right. I'm with you. What level? Half. International standard is like 70 to 80 tons. 70 to 80. To 80. If you look at China, it it will give you 70 plus per hectare. But wow. our people are sitting like 18, 20. Yeah. So we have And a long way to go. We have a long way to go, but we can do 40, no, 45 is still we possible. Can we can definitely reach that. Okay. No, we we have, no, I mean them. Maybe not people. Don't look down on us. We have him. That's why I said, you know, stages. You know, empower the farmers. Thank you. Don't worry. We not only empower the farmers. We also empower you with knowledge on what you can do to extend the shelf life of that tomato that is in your house. How can you prepare it or process it at home in our next segment? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. When you choose to play on the fields of the ancient agrarian marketplace, consider a good coach to take along with you. The Udongo app is your gateway to the Nigerian agricultural ecosystem. Whether you are a newbie or an oldie, signing up instantly connects you with a community of other farmers, products, agents, distributors and resources all in one place. Access our unique and simple interface from the bustling big cities to the most remote regions across Nigeria. Enjoy full access to real-time farming solutions that help you make timely and profitable decisions or allow our one-on-one -on -one consultancy services cheer you on with each move you make. As a newbie or oldie looking to make a big agricultural footprint, feel secure knowing you have the best coach always in your pocket. Udongo app is your personalized farming coach available to you every time, anywhere, just at the click of a button. Download the Udongo app from the Google Play Store now and enjoy new opportunities. Welcome to the Farm and Fortune DIY hack. I bet you never thought you could process tomato at home. Well, here's how. Get lots of tomatoes because they reduce drastically after processing. Wash your hands. Cut your washed fresh tomatoes into smaller bits and blend smooth. Put blended tomato in a muslin bag, the bag that is used for processing pap. and allow it to drain overnight over a bowl. If necessary, place a heavy item on the bag, store in a refrigerator, and just like that, tomato paste. Keep watching, there's more to come on the show. It's still fam and fortune and our segment right now is the soil segment. Are you ready? We have a soil expert in person of Mr. Babaji Day. Good to have you. Thank you very much. I keep hearing about Babaji Day. I thought it was the former governor. Oh, maybe the future governor, but not yet, man. Which of the Babaji Day are you? My name is Babaji Day Ahmed Lawal, a registered soil scientist from the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science Abuja. Abuja. Yes, ma'am. Not just ordinary one. No, Abuja, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you very Good much. Good to have you on Farm and Fortune. Thank you, my Please pleasure. Please tell us, tomato is mostly grown in the northern part of mm, Nigeria. That's true. Now, what kind of soil do we need for tomato to grow? Thank you very much. Well, tomatoes require a well-drained soil. Okay. 
the soil that is fertile, when I mean fertile, they have the right amount of macro and micronutrients to supply, to enable them to grow well. Okay. Tomato does not like a waterlogged soil, okay. a soil that is free from water, plenty of water. Tomato also requires a pH of 6.0 to 6.8. Okay. okay now. That's what it needs. That's what it needs now. Great. Optimal. Okay, where else can tomato grow? Because we've been, we know that it's not, not, but do we have other places that tomatoes grow Definitely. in Nigeria? Definitely. Tomato grows in the southern part of the country. For example, let's take oil states. Okay. Delta states okay. and emo states, just to mention a few. So looking at the soil status on the screen, how can you explain this to us? Well, looking at the soil status, the macronutrients are very low, oh. which, are, which, um, which is going to be very bad for the tomatoes. The uh, micronutrient, look at okay, this one, the calcium, calcium. is 8.68, which is low. Mm -hmm. The boron, mm. the boron is um, less than 0 0.50, mm. which is very low. Then look at the copper, the copper is 1.2, which is low. Having looked at the fertility status of the soil, what are the recommendations that best solve this problem? Okay. Having looked at the fertility status of the soil, what yes. are the probable, uh, probable recommendations? Yes. First, the farmer advised to apply MPK. That's at 150 kg per hectare, which okay. is equivalent to three um, bags, bags of yes. per hectare. Okay. They should be applied at land preparation. That's basal application. Okay. Next, another 150 kg of MPK, which is equivalent to three bags. This should be applied three to four weeks after transplanting. Wow. In addition, the farmer advised to apply urea at 100 kg per hectare, which is equivalent, equivalent to two, two bags, bags per hectare. This should be applied five to six weeks after transplanting. Again, the farmer are advised to apply another 100 um, kg per hectare of urea, which is equivalent to two um, bags per hectare. This should be applied seven to eight weeks after transplanting. Having said the recommendation, um, yes. if the farmer follow this to the letter, I assure you that they are going to get an improved harvest. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it from our soil expert, Mr. Babajide. Thank you very much. Thanks so if you want me. to go into the tomato industry, you have to follow all our teachings on farm and fortune. Don't go anywhere. We're going to the next segment, the game, 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 with Mr. Frank. Enjoy. It's still farm and fortune. It's game time on Farm and Fortune, and you know how we do it here. 16 farmers are competing at three knockout stages and the grand finale for a total grand prize of half a million naira. That's 500,000 naira worth of farm impute. And the stakes are high, but the rules of the game are always very simple here on Farm and Fortune. On this episode, I have two fantastic gentlemen joining us to go head to head to see who's going to qualify to move on. To the next round of the game. And with me here, to my immediate left, I have Hamid Olani. Yes, You're welcome. Yes, and next to him, I have Adeyemi Adeoye, right? Thank You're you welcome. Very much, so, Mr. Hamid, you are a farmer, right? Yeah. What kind of things do you farm? I rare fishes. Fish farming. Interesting. Why fish farming? Yeah, well, uh, it's not something everybody uh, goes into, so I feel it's yeah. something I... And I feel this connection with aquatic animals, so I... Oh, you have this connection with aquatic animals. Yeah. Like you know, Aquaman. <laughs> You're right. No, no, no. Plus, you also like pepper soup, catfish pepper soup. Oh, well, I do, of course. Are you so, a catfish? Yeah, of course. Is that catfish. only all you have? Yeah, oh, catfish. catfish. Nice, yeah. interesting. All right, Mr. Deyemi. Sir. What do you do in farming? I'm into pig sir. Ah, interesting. Yes, Why? Why that? Yes, there are a lot of things I consider before I choose pig in terms of uh, their rate of mortality, then mm. they are feeding as well. I consider them, then I see it is very easy. It's one of the farm businesses that is very easy to start and it's very is it profitable. Lucrative? Very profitable. It's very profitable. Okay. Okay. Profit is all we're after. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, Hamid and Adeyemi are here to battle. In this game of tomato dunk, you have only 20 seconds. 20 seconds only for the tomato dunk game. Get your apparels, your goggles, and your, gla and your gloves. Wear them when I count you down to zero, and dunk as fast as you can in 20 seconds. From here, into right? Yes. From me. Standing where you are, you can't move any closer. You have to dunk as many tomatoes as you can into the bucket. Whoever has the highest number of dunks wins the game. May the best man win. Your time starts in three, two, one, zero.
have just 20 seconds. 15 tomatoes per person. Let's see who dunks the most tomatoes in the bucket. Be careful not to dunk tomatoes in your opponent's bucket. Time is ticking. And then five, four, three, two, one, and time's up. Time's up. Time's up. All right. <laughs> Now let's see who has the highest number of tomatoes in the tomato dunks game. Hami and Adeyemi went head to head. All they had to do was they had 20 seconds to dunk the most tomatoes in the bucket for the tomato dunk. All right, I'll count now. For Hamid, I have one. And that's it. For Adeyemi, I have one. And two. We have a winner, Adeyemi. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. So Adeyemi goes to the next round of the competition where he's going to attempt to get into the grand finale and win the grand prize of 500,000 naira worth of farm impute on farm and fortune. All right, congratulations. Thank you. But very hey, much. everybody is a winner on farm and fortune. <laughs> All you have to do is join us on www.farmandfortune.com or follow us on our social media handles on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at farm and fortune. Talk to us, let's know what projects you're working on. You can also get a lot of information on agriculture and watch a repeat of all our shows at that website. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Oh, Mr. Frank, tell me, at what point were you a basketballer in your life? <laughs> hey, leave, leave, leave game. That's a story for another day for my grandchildren. Oh my goodness. That's by the way. Thank you for watching our program Farm and Fortune. And of course, don't forget to rewatch our wonderful educative program on YouTube at Farm and Fortune. Like, share, and please subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Farm and Fortune. I'm Frank Gonga. I'm Helen Paul, and see, see you, you next week. week.